Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember, context is everything. Media Network founder and CEO John Michael is reading a textbook cover to cover. This textbook is from 1940, and it's American history. Once I finish it, I'm not going to read another history textbook, because then I'll have read a full world history textbook and a full American history textbook, both severely outdated. That's okay. I truly think that we're being lied to in modern day writing. We're probably being lied to in this as well. Thomas Jefferson, the beginning of chapter 7. After Washington's time, John Adams followed George Washington as president. John Adams was ser has served his country long and well. He was a member of the First Continental Congress. Adams spoke favorably of the Declaration of Independence. After the Revolution, Congress sent John Adams to England to help make the peace treaty. Adams was sent was the first man sent to uh, was the first man elected vice president of the United States. He served two terms while President Washington was president. John Adams certainly understood the problems of the country, yet he was not the sort of man that people easily followed. He was not easy, always patient. He liked to have his way, uh, and that was that. Uh, that is one reason why he was not a successful leader. The people were glad to have Thomas Jeff Jefferson as the third president of the United States when Adams' term was over as the president. Thomas Jefferson did great things for the country. Boyhood of Thomas Jefferson Thomas Jefferson was born on a large farm or plantation in Virginia. As soon as he was old enough, he went to school. There were few schools in Virginia in those days. Thomas Jefferson was a good student. As a boy, he learned to love books. During his long life, books always were important to him. He also learned to play the violin. He was very faithful about practicing the soon-learned and soon learned to play quite well. First Lessons in Politics After his school days, Jefferson went to William and Mary College, which was located in Williamsburg, Virginia. Williamsburg was then where the laws for the colony were made. Met in, uh, During his college days, Thomas Jefferson learned something about politics. Many times, this tall, freckled lad listened to the debates in the House of Burgesses. He began to understand politics. He heard the burning words of Patrick Henry in defiance of the English king. The express, uh, he experienced the experiences which the young Thomas Jefferson had in the House of Burgesses were preparing him to serve his country. A youthful statesman. Soon after he left college, Thomas Jefferson returned to Williamsburg. This time he came as a member of the House of Burgesses, entering public life as was quite a sacrifice for Jefferson. He had many excuses for staying at home. He had an immense plantation to look after. He owned nearly 1,000 acres of land. More than 300 slaves worked for him, slaved for him. He left all this because he believed that he owed the duty to his country. The stirring days of American Revolution gave Thomas Jefferson many opportunities to be helpful to his country. Author of an Important Declaration The First Continental Congress met in Philadelphia. Virginia sent Thomas Jefferson as a representative. He took an a, a active part in helping the Continental Congress do its work. Thomas Jefferson was not a fine speaker. He lacked the skills of his friend Patrick Henry, but there was one thing Jefferson did very well. He was able to write clearly on different subjects. He used words that ordinary people could understand. He was able to tell the people about their government and their rights as citizens. So he was chosen to write one of the most famous papers that was ever written. This is the Declaration of Independence. In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson wrote, 1. That each and every person has a certain rights. 
Two, that governments should defend the rights of the people. And three, that the American people should be free from England because of their denial of their rights. England's denial of their rights. Jefferson put the, his whole soul into writing the Declaration of Independence. President Thomas Jefferson. Years passed, and Jefferson was elected President of the United States. Uh, towards noon on March 4, 1801, he left his boarding house in Washington and walked into, a new capital, into the new capital. There was no parade, no fuss. The inauguration, inauguration was to take place in the room used by the Senate. The building was hardly completed. Few people noticed the unfinished building. They were more interested in the new president. The man they looked at was slender and tall. His face was covered in freckles. His dress was plain. He seemed to be just a man of the people. Even today, we speak of Jefferson's simplicity. The Western Country Jefferson will always be remembered for two things. He wrote the Declaration of Independence, and he made the Louisiana Purchase. I didn't realize that. He, at one time, France owned a very large amount of land in North America. The French territory stretched from the west bank of Mississippi River all the way to the Rocky Mountains. The map on page 265 shows this land. It was called the Louisiana Territory. About the time Jefferson became president, hundreds of families were moving to the west. West of the Appalachian Mountains, they found plenty of free land. They raised corn and wheat, cattle and hogs. They raised more than they needed for themselves, and they looked around for a place to sell the surplus. It cost too much to send their products across the mountains to the east, so they floated their supply goods down the Ohio and the Mississippi rivers on flat boats into New Orleans. Find New Orleans on the map on page 291. New Orleans was a source of trouble. The Mississippi River marked the western boundary of the United States at the time. Our country owned only the eastern bank of that river. Worse still, the United States did not own the city of New Orleans. This port belonged to France. The ships from Europe docked at New Orleans. The Americans had trouble getting to the, these ships. President Jefferson and other Americans saw that the United States ought to know New Orleans. Ownership of New Orleans would resolve the trying problem of shipping on the Mississippi River. The Louisiana Purchase President Jefferson sent James Monroe to France. He was told to see if New Orleans and the land around the mouth of the Mississippi River could be bought. Monroe met with Robert Livingston, another American, in Paris. Napoleon Bonaparte was the ruler of France. His worst enemy was England. When Napoleon heard that the Americans wanted to buy New Orleans, he thought this thought came to his mind. Two thoughts came to his mind. He needed money, and he hated England. If he made a deal with the Americans, he would get a large sum of money, and he could block England's growth forever in America. Napoleon did not realize the real value of Louisiana. So unwisely, Napoleon offer, uh, so unwisely, Napoleon offered to sell not only New Orleans, but the whole Louisiana territory. The Americans accepted Napoleon's offer. The price was $15 million. It was the biggest piece of land that was ever sold. The Louisiana Purchase was made in 1803. This is an important date in American history because it marks the real beginning of our growth. The Great Bargain. What a bargain it, that was. It almost doubled the size of the country. The Rocky Mountains became the western boundary of the United States. There were great and fertile plains, thousands of acres of farms, immense grazing lands for cattle. There were forests of the finest woods. In the mountains, gold and silver were waiting for the miners. The, peop the map on page 417, or on page 266, why are you telling me about 417, shows the territories that were later made in the Louisiana Territory, exploring the Louisiana Territory. 
Even before the United States had bought the Louisiana Territory, President Jefferson wanted to know more about the great section of North America. So no time was lost. Congress gave the money, and the party of explorers was formed. Two men were uh, in command of the exploring party. Captain Merriweather Lewis was one of them. He was Jefferson's secretary. The other was the leader, William Clark. He was a younger brother of George Rogers Clark. Lewis and Clark Expedition. Lewis and Clark's small force met in the St. Louis. It was then only it was then only a small fur trading post on the Mississippi River. Some of the band had been explorers. Others were Indian fighters or fur traders. Still, others went for high adventure. The leaders were young, but they were wise. Before starting the difficult trip, six months were spent in preparation. The men did much marching. They practiced with their rifles. They learned how to hunt, uh, handle their boats. The party began its long journey in the spring of 1804. There were 45 men in three boats. Up the Mississippi River, they went to the mouth of the Missouri River. Then they started up the Big Muddy, as the Mississippi River is called. It was hard work to make the boats go against the strong current. The boats were heavy, and they were loaded with supplies. There were many snags in the river. A snag might be a log, a half-sunken tree, or a sandbar. The party slowed, uh, slowly pushed up the river. The river wound through great grassy plains. Thousands of buffalo were seen. It was autumn before they reached the present state of North Dakota, the time they had come to settle down for the winter. The Bird Woman They met an Indian squaw in Dakota. This Indian woman was to be a great help to the American explorers. She was called Sacagawea, which means bird woman. She had been born in the mountains. She offered to the land the Americans across the mountains. When the sp second spring came, the party started on again, with the bird woman leading. They had many adventures. Their food ran low, and game was scarce and hard to shoot. The party left the Louisiana Territory and crossed the high Rocky Mountains. Here it was hard to find their way. At length, the men and their guide came to another great river. It was the Columbia River. They built boats, Indian fashion, by burning out logs. Soon they were floating down the Columbia River. Finally, they came into view of the Pacific Ocean, which they had been anxious to see. They had reached the Oregon country. The journey back was hard and dangerous one. There were grizzly bears, rattlesnakes, insects, and some unfriendly Indians. Yet through it all, only one man deserted and one man died. After more than two years and an 8,000-mile trip, Lewis and Clark reached the Mississippi River. The Journal of Lewis and Clark Lewis and Clark kept a journal. It was a day-by-day -day account of their famous journey. Their journal is for, uh, full of bad spelling and bad grammar. It also is full of the most useful information. It told all about the lands they visited, the trees, the shrubs, and the grasses. The journal described the life of Indians and told, the, uh, and told where uh, minerals could be found. Best of all, for those times, it told where fur-bearing animals lived. Soon the trappers were moving to the Louisiana territories. Trappers took the first step in opening up the country. President Jefferson was delighted to, with the result of Lewis and Clark's expedition. The president and his cabinet began to realize what a bargain they had obtained from France. Zebulian Pike in the southwest. Zebulon. Another expedition to explore the western part of the United States was sent out. Under Zebulun Pike, a young army lieutenant, The this expl expedition went beyond Louisiana Territory into the west and the southwest. Pike had some exploring, but 
some had done some exploring, but he had done very much on guard. The country he was going to belonged to Spain. Lieutenant Zebulon Pike learned that he must be very careful not to offend the Spanish. His party of picked men reached the president, uh, present state of Colorado, where they discovered the high snow-capped mountains uh, we now call the Pike's Peak. Oh. Pike went further, oh, and farther to the south into Spanish territory and was arrested by Spanish soldiers. Later he was freed. He too wrote an account of his journal, the West was being made known to America. That's it. God bless. Bye-bye.